So we're covering our last phylum of invertebrates, and that's phylum Echinodermata. Um, these are just a few examples of organisms in phylum Echinodermata. We collectively refer to them as echinoderms. All echinoderms have a couple things in common. Um, the first thing that they have in common is uh, radial symmetry. So radial symmetry means that the organism um, can be cut in any which way and equal two equal halves um, will be provided. In the case of echinoderms, many times that, uh, that symmetry is pentamic. Penta means five, so the body seems to be divided in five equal parts. They also all have tube feet in common, so tube feet um, on this sea star are shown on the bottom of it, but it depends on the organism. And those tube feet are controlled by a water vascular system. Every single echinoderm has tube feet that are controlled by a water vascular system, but they might use them for slightly different things. Another thing that they all have is um, dermal branchiae, and these are these um, dots, that the bumps that sort of... Um, Sorry, make that arrow. The bumps that sort of make them rough, uh, that's the area in which they absorb oxygen from the water. So they don't have lungs and they don't have gills, but they have dermal branchiae. Crinoids include uh, feather stars and sea lilies. Uh, some of them are sessile as adults. They do have tube feet, but their tube feet tend to be um, on the ends of the, uh, the arms, and they tend to have pentamic symmetry in multiples of five. Their mouths face upward, unlike most other echinoderms. Brittle stars are another one that you'll see around here. They're in Classophoridia. Uh, their arms are in multiples of five, usually. Uh, they tend to use their arms for locomotion. All of their tube feet, all of their organs are in their central disc, unlike a regular sea star. Um, their mouths also face downward, and they have teeth similar to um, echinoids, which we'll cover in a minute. So echinoids, class Echinoidea, include sand dollars and sea urchins. Um, they have a downward-facing mouth as well. Uh, they tend to have a ball or disc shape. The important thing about these guys is that they have a shell made out of calcium carbonate. Um, they tend to be filter feeders uh, or scavengers. Uh, sea urchins are a very important herbivore. Sea cucumbers are in um, class Holothuroidea and they can take many, many different shapes. This is just one example. Um, they're, all their bodies are elongated. They have uh, tentacles that surround their mouth, some used to filter the water and some used to filter sand, um, to shovel sand into their mouths. They have a unique uh, defense mechanism in which they can actually expel their digestive organism, organs sorry, when they are threatened and um, then regenerate those digestive organs. Uh, it takes them a few days, and so they have to hide, and it's pretty stressful for the animal. The most commonly known um, organism in this group are in class Astroidea. Many people call them starfish. You'll hear me call them sea stars because they're not actually fish. Um, they also have a downward-facing mouth. They are actually the top predator in the um, intertidal zone or the tide pools, as you may know them. They may move slowly, but there isn't much that can get away from them. They can actually use their tube feet to hold on um, and outlast, outlast anything that doesn't have a water vascular system. The water vascular system does not require any energy, and therefore they don't have to expend any energy like you would with a muscle trying to pry something apart. So they can just outlast a muscle or a clam, and eventually they're going to pop open, and the sea star will then consume what's inside. These guys also have uh, the unique ability to completely regenerate. So as long as they contain a portion of the arm and some of that center disc, they can regenerate an entirely new sea star because they carry an equal share of all of their organs and systems within that um, arm. So they can actually regenerate. Theoretically, you could cut this sea star into five equal pieces, and you would get five sea stars that come from that. So for tomorrow, make sure you have these notes because you're going to do a quick observation lab in which you identify and describe the external anatomy of sea stars, the little ones that are in my fish tank. And then the big lab that you're going to do is you're going to predict the effect of decreasing pH, which means an increasing acidity here, um, on sea star, on, sorry, on developing sea urchins. So since their shells are made out of calcium carbonate, how is that decreasing um, pH or that increasing acidity going to affect them.